Okay, I'm going to cover the next two tabs together because they both work in the same way. So the next two tabs are probably the most important tabs that everybody has questions about. It's the Bank 1 and Bank 2 tabs. These are the tabs where you come in and you can fine-tune the Cortex for your flying style or your plane application if you really want to get it down to absolute perfect when flying with the Cortex. So I'm going to cover Bank 1 first. And as I said, in the factory default settings, Bank 1 is your rate mode, otherwise indicated by the amber LED. So we're going to come down here. We're going to see that this bank is active. Again, you hover over it. It says shows if this bank is presently active or not. So I'm going to turn it on. And now this bank is active. The access enabled just lets us know that these the access is enabled and stabilizing. You have the option to come in here and you can turn off certain accesses if you know that you don't want it stabilized or change it to a hold if you want it to be very stable versus the other two while you still have normal flight control over them. I'm going to leave this here back on normal. This is the gyro mode. As I covered a little bit just before, this lets you specify the mode of the gyro for each individual access. So you can choose to have the ailerons and the elevators under rate mode and the rudder off or the rudder under hold. And you can choose to have any combination thereof of whatever you wanted it to do. The next portion down here is the gyro gain. This is the gain for each individual access. As you can see, I can turn this up here and it reaches a max of 20. So this isn't on a scale of 0 to 100. Adjustments that you make in here are pretty coarse. These are like course adjustments. When you go into your transmitter and you adjust your servo endpoint, that's a finer adjustment. So the way to look at this is these are course adjustments for your gyro on each axis, and then the fine adjustment is within inside your radio. The adjustment in your radio also is a global adjustment. So as you drive the servo endpoints out, it is approaching closer to the maximum amount of gain that you have specified for each of these axes. So you can come in here and you can change these settings to best suit your flying style. So a lot of people, their first question they ask is how do I use these settings to maximize the effectiveness of the Cortex? Well, the easiest way to do this is to go out Fly the Cortex, adjust the gain out, and make note of the axis that you see oscillations on. Land the plane, come into the software, and you take the axis that you saw the oscillation on, you lower the gyro gain. So for example, if I saw wagging on my ailerons, I would come in here and I would take the ailerons down one point. I would write it take off and I'll adjust the gain out again until I see another axis oscillate or maybe it might be the same axis that oscillates first. You would then land and you would adjust the axis that you saw oscillating down one point if it's the same or not. You continue doing this process until you've seen all three axes oscillate. After you've seen the last axis oscillate you adjust it back one point, you go up, you take off, and then when you crank out the fine gain on your transmitter, each access's gain should be at the maximum possible for the Cortex setup. So the next thing we're going to come down here and we're going to talk about is stick priority and latching. This is another one that a lot of people have questions on. Stick priority is how fast the cortex stops stabilizing the plane as the sticks on your transmitter move away from center. Latching 
defines how fast the cortex starts to stabilize the plane as your sticks return to center. So for 3D guys, um, especially there's an example of these settings posted up by Yellow Jacket uh, on RCG, you would like a higher stick priority and a lower latching. What that's going to do is going to make it that if you make a small touch on your transmitter, the cortex will let go immediately. And as you're coming back to center, the cortex isn't going to take back over until you get closer to the center. For guys that are flying scale planes that want it to be a little bit more smoother and more scale-like flying, you can come in here and you can try a lower stick priority setting and a higher latching. Just remember that if you play with these a lot, you're going to have to fly the plane and make sure that you get the feeling that you want when you're flying the plane. Uh, you may find that if you adjust this too extreme in one direction or another, the plane might be a little numb or it might be overly sensitive. Uh, you'll have to play with it and find what works best for you. The next tab here, Bank 2, is exactly the same as Bank 1 with the exception of the values are a little different. So as we see here, as I flip to Bank 2, these went from normal to hold. So this is where in the factory default setting, Bank 2 is the hold mode. The amber indicates a green when in Bank 2. You can see my gyro gain values changed a little bit and my stick priority values also changed a little bit. The latching stays the same between the two banks under factory defaults. So this is the next thing that a lot of people like to ask about because if you played with the hold mode, it you realize very quickly you can't fly the plane with it in hold mode. It's not very controllable and it feels like it's fighting you and then you feel like the plane is doing something crazy. What a lot of people are finding when they put it in hold mode, they're trying to fly the plane and then it's not doing what they want it to do so then they try to give more input and then it's still not doing it and then they'll come out of hold mode and then all of a sudden the plane will start going wacky and doing all kinds of stuff because in actuality they were over controlling it so for those that are using hold mode for the first time if you want to try it out I recommend it you use it on something like a hover where you pull the plane up into a hover attitude flip the cortex into hold mode and touch nothing but the throttle. Just pulse the throttle to keep the plane in the air and at the altitude that you want. And then before you exit hold mode, give full throttle, start your climb, and as you're climbing out, don't touch any of the controls, exit hold mode, go back into rate mode or off, and then the plane won't do anything crazy. But again, because of the way hold mode works and a lot of people find that they don't really want it, a common thing that people want is they want to have a second rate mode. They want to have a second rate mode that they can either assign a different gain in the transmitter for, for windier days, or different individual settings for different flight conditions. Like I've had an individual want to have a second rate mode where they're using it for crosswind landings and they have different gyro gain values in here to try to help them with crosswind landings. How you're going to do that is you're going to come back here to the Bank 1 tab and you're going to come over here and we're going to notice there's another button here called Copy Bank. In it is Copy 1 to 2. So if I press this button, it'll come up and says Overwrite the settings in the other Bank tab with the settings as displayed here. I'm going to go ahead and click Yes. And we're going to come up here to bank 2 and now we're going to see that it has the exact same gyro gain stick priority and lashing settings and the gyro mode is normal now instead of hold so this is a quick way for you to get two rate modes in the cortex and then in your transmitter adjust two different gains for windier days and days where it's not so windy the last tab I'm going to cover here is going to be the help tab you just click on it it just gives you a quick blurb short information about the Cortex setup software. Um, hopefully these videos will help out more because it seems like a lot of people have questions, especially uh, when it comes to Bank 1 and Bank 2 and what all these buttons in here do.
Again, if you noticed how when I made, when I switched between bank one and bank two, when you read and write within the individual tabs, it makes changes to that tab only. To do a global write, write all the tabs at once, you come back here and you hit the write all button. And now back at bank one and bank two is back to factory defaults. Hopefully this video helps everybody out. Thank you very much.